Hi there, Miss Brown is back, and today we're going to be learning about a new phylum called Phylum Nidaria. So we're Kingdom Animalia, and now we're in a new phylum, Phylum Nidaria. And these are the animals that sting you, and you may be familiar with this uh, as jellyfish. Many of you, unfortunately, have had close encounters with those at the beach, including me, or um, coral reefs. Okay, so under number one, it says to label the picture. So over to the right in the diagram, this animal is a hydra. H-Y-D-R-A. And remember, you can stop this and start it again if you need more time. Number two, what gives it its name? The stinging cells that are called nidocytes. And we're going to try to label as we go on your diagram. So go to C on your diagram and put nidocyte. That's the stingers. That's where they sting. All right, name other animals. We have hydra, um, hydra, jellyfish, sea anemone, and the coral. All these are examples. Okay, cells of this animal are organized into functional units called tissues. So the peripheral were at the cellular level, so now we've moved up to the tissue level. So this is where cells group together to form some tissues, some basic uh, things in this animal. All right, this animal's body has two layers. It has the ectoderm and the endoderm, and the jelly in between is called the mesoglea. So go over to your diagram, and for D as in dog, that's the endoderm. E as in egg is the ectoderm, and we did not label the mesoglea, but it's that black line you see there. All right, six, members of this family have a body plan with radial symmetry. It means it radiates out like a wheel. Think of radials like a wheel, like a tire, radial tires. And we have two different types of bodies in this group. We have the polyp. The hydras have a polyp, number seven. And the jellyfish have a medusa. And I have you a picture there below of the medusa. All right, number eight, the special stinging cells are called nidocytes, and the stingers inside have nematocysts, and they are located on the animal's tentacles. <coughs> so go up to your picture, and on A, label it the tentacle. So what happens, these act like a harpoon. So when you, t when you touch against it, or it touches against prey, uh, it will shoot these things out. It shoots out these stingers and it has venom. And the venom uh, is a neurotoxin. So small things it likes to eat, plankton and that sort of thing, it actually uh, stuns it and uh, causes it to be still so it can eat it. Uh, you, it just makes you get away from it in a hurry because you scare it. <laughs> so it uses it for defense on you. Um, so these stinging cells, number nine, are used for defense and killing prey. Defense and killing prey. So it's how they get their food. Now, these animals have only one body opening, number 10, one body opening called the mouth, which leads into a hollow gastrovascular cavity or sac, S-A-C. Food enters the mouth and waste exits. <coughs> Excuse me. Their predatory meat eating habits make them prefer a carnivorous diet. So now let's go back to our drawing on B, label that mouth. I want you to label F, flagella, and label G, gastrovascular cavity. So what happens, it has these tentacles that wave around, and it will sting its prey, and then it uses those tentacles to rake it into its mouth. And inside this sac is where it digests the food, and then the waste goes back out the mouth the same place. So I guess on days we feel bad, we can be glad we're not a hydra. The waste comes out the same place the food comes in. This is a very elementary digestive system. It is not... Um, very efficient because what if you are full of food and there's waste that needs to exit and more food is coming by so you can't get any more food uh, until you get the waste out and there's going to be some mixing of food that's not digested well yet that's going to come out so it's not very efficient but it is a very simple uh, digestive method that's used with the tissues Okay, 11, the polyp-shaped animals rest on their basal disc while the medusas are free-swimming body forms. Now, 12, this group has the most primitive of all nervous systems called a nerve net. 
And some members are bioluminescent and they actually glow in the dark and that helps them to escape predators because they'll flash and then go dark and the predator goes where the flash is and when the when it's dark the nidarian will move. So it's not lit up all the time and it kind of it works kind of as a bait and switch to help them out. Now, they reproduce asexually by forming buds or sexually by forming sperm and egg. And these sperm and egg uh, join to make larvae that are ciliated and called planula. So you can go back up to your drawing and for H, label that a bud. Now, the hydra is the only freshwater species in this phylum. All the others are marine. And the coral forms deposits in ocean waters. Uh, the largest of these is the Great Barrier Reef off the coast of Australia. And this is where our pretty white sandy beaches come from that we love at the Gulf. We have some of the prettiest beaches in the world uh, here in Alabama and the Gulf uh, of Mexico. And that is eroded from the or coral reef. And it's also got there other ways. And you'll see that on the video that you're going to be watching next. Thank you.